So I've got a bunch of seeds that have been sitting in my fridge in the garage now for a couple of years. And I'd like to broadcast them a bit everywhere. And they're native uh, perennial wildflowers. There are also some edibles and some some uh, medicinals. So this here is, there are probably millions of seeds here of evening primrose. Um, the, the flowers are edible. The, and the seeds are full of omega-3. I'm gonna, which you can have in, in like a milkshake and stuff like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do these. But in a minute, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. I've got some, this is some sorrel seed, which is a great green, first green of the summer, available in April. Uh, but you, you can have it through the summer and right up until the end of the fall. Wonderful. Tastes lemony, really healthy. But, I mean, you don't need a ton of it because it's a little, it's very, very tangy, but it's great to add to salads. Uh, and it's great in the garden. This is some sage. What else we got here? We've got some, what is, oh, some giant mustard. Yeah, love that stuff, it's beautiful. That's probably not native, but uh, it's edible and it's great to have a bit. Here's some more uh, uh, evening primrose, but I think I've got enough of that. I'm just gonna use it all up. And uh, what's in here? Oh, these are some marigold. I'm not gonna put these out right now. I'm gonna, more, I'm gonna test these actually. And what do we have here? We have some turnip seed. No, I'm not gonna do most of that. So, what I got here is, got this big bowl. And I'm just gonna throw all this sorrel seed in the bowl, like that. It's a pasta bowl. So then I'll have a sorrel seed in there. And I'm probably gonna just use about half of this because there are like probably millions of seeds in there. So let's just pour about half of this in here with the sorrel. There. There, I've put about half of it in there. It's probably still have millions of seeds in there. A bunch of them dropped here, but it's fine. I'll start growing in the driveway. Some of this sage. It's a lot of sage flower, but there are probably some seeds. Oh, there's another jar of something in here. Hold on. Let me... Yeah, there's another jar of something in there. What is this? Oh, here we have... What is this? This is some yarrow. I'll throw that in there. Yarrow's great. Wonderful medicinal plant. And also great for your other plants. Benefits the other plants. Benefits their immune system and then we have the mustard the giant mustard just a just a couple hundred seeds in there throw that in there okay got some more here but i'm not going to use them all up rather test these Put them in the garden so now i've got this mixture of all these seeds i'm going to mix it all up like that i like mixing things up and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to walk around areas that are maybe disturbed. Um, that where we got some bare earth, and I'm just gonna throw this on there. Just gonna throw it like that. Whoosh, whoosh, throw it. Yep. So now I'm all ready. So I'm gonna put this back in the fridge in the garage, or just put it in the garage because the garage is like a fridge right now. Maybe not exactly. I think it's about five degrees in there about what is that like mid 40s in uh, Fahrenheit something like that so uh, anyway got millions of seeds here so I'm going to be able to use this as green mulch we're going to be able to use this in salads as medicinals and uh, it's going to be beautiful flowers all over the place and so uh, voila when it comes time to broadcast these I'll film it I'm not ready because the ground is still a bit frozen. Um, 
And uh, now they've been, they like I said, they've been in the fridge, so they've had their cold. They've had like months, if not a couple of years of cold. So they'll, they're going to be fine, even though we're coming up to March. Not that much cold weather left, but uh, there'll be, there should be enough. And uh, you know what? Whatever doesn't grow this year, that's the thing about these things. If it's too warm of a spring for these to get going, they'll just wait till next year and they'll grow next year. Unless, of course, they get eaten by the birds and the animals, and that's fine too. Because then the birds and the animals will drop other seeds for us. There you go. So the other day, I started preparing this pasta bowl full of perennial wildflower, native perennial wildflower seeds for uh, some disturbed spots that I'd like to have things grow in. And now I've got a whole bunch of other perennial wildflowered seeds that um, I'd like to add to this mix because I've got some very la fairly large disturbed areas that I would just like to naturalize um, rather than, let's say, put grass seed back on them, which is, uh, that's what was uh, those the two areas that I'm looking at um, where I had to do some some work there was grass on them. I don't need grass. I'd rather have perennial wildflowers, perennial native wildflowers. And so I've got a lot of old seeds that have been sitting around. This, for example, is a, is Leatris. Or uh, there's another word for it. I can't remember. Anyways, a Blazing Star. That's right, Leatris. It's a beautiful native wildflower. Just going to throw that in there. It's uh, the end of February, February 29th, 2024. So uh, we should still have enough cold weather left in the season. If there isn't, well then, maybe they'll, if, they're, if they're still there next year, then they'll grow next year. But I think we should be good. And a lot of these seeds were in my fridge and in, in, the, in my garage fridge anywhere. So there's some more of the actress. And I've also got other, I, I, I have more than just perennial native wildflowers here because I'd like to see flowers other parts of the season. So I've got some, I'm mixing some other things in. For instance, I've got a whole bunch of old, um, these are marigolds, which are an edible flower. They're very beautiful. These are old seeds. They're not really germinating anymore. So maybe they won't grow, but maybe they will. And if they don't, They'll be a distraction to the animals, and the animals will maybe eat these instead of my other ones. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We got all sorts of stuff. We've got some sorrel here, which is wonderful. Love to have that all over the place. And uh, some more liatris. Well, here actually, these these will give you an idea of what that's. You know, that's something of what the bloom looks like. It's like two or three times longer than this, or four times longer than this, and and uh, bright pink and, and maybe two or three times as wide as this. This is just obviously the seed head. So just throw that in there. This reminds me, this reminds me of a, a show I watched as a kid, The Hilarious House of Frankenstein. And I loved the cook on that show because he or she, I can't remember if they were a he or a she, it doesn't really matter. Oh, they had this big cauldron, and they I loved their kitchen. It was full of garlic and herbs hanging all over the place. they just throw it all in and mix it all up. I like to cook that way, too. What do we got here? More marigolds. Let's throw that in there. All right, and then what do we have here? Some more evening primrose. And uh, oh, got some packets of yarrow here. And another pack of the Leatris. You see, so and what I do here, because with when you when you plant like this, I'm just gonna broadcast them. I'm just gonna throw them like this over the area. You know, rather than putting one plant in one place and another in another, I don't know what's gonna sprout and what isn't gonna sprout. You mix it all up, you're guaranteed to have. You're guaranteed to have something in every spot. More liatris. These are old seeds, and so, uh, you know, I know that I'd like to do some selling of seeds, but I haven't really started. 
And these are too old to sell. They're at least three years old. I'm not gonna sell three-year-old seeds. I'll just plant them. Here is some more yarrow. And I'll reuse these envelopes. Here we got some nanny berry. That'd be great to have some shrubs growing in those areas. The other thing is, I get so many seeds every year, I'm gonna be able to freshen it all up. Here's a bunch of wild oats. Okay, let's mix all this up again. My bowl is, my bowl is starting to get filled up. Uh, let me see, I've got a jar here of senna. Love senna, beautiful flower. The bees love it. They just love it. And it's a bean, see that? And so it's a, this is a leguminous, so it feeds the soil. So throw these in here. The, the, the bean pods are still, are still closed. So I'm gonna throw it in here and then I'm gonna crush them and they're just gonna all open. The seeds are gonna fall all over the place. I love this plant. Okay, mix it up, mix it up. Got some milkweed here. Get in there. Good stuff. Go on, everybody. Everybody in. What else we got here? What happened to the lid? Oh, whatever. Find it later. What's this? Ah, what is this? Oh, this is dill. I thought this was yarrow because it says yarrow here, but on this size it says dill, and I'm realizing that's dill. No, I'm gonna, this is, I took this from the kitchen. I better leave it in the kitchen. <laughs> I thought it was yarrow and we have a ton of yarrow in the kitchen, but it's dill, so I'm gonna leave it there. Oh, you know what? Grab a few seeds. Grab a few seeds. Just a few. Leave the rest. Okay, what else? This is all, this is the done area. This is some kind of a, I think this is maple leaf of burnum fruit. Okay, got some high bush cranberry seeds. There we go. What else we got here? Some sage, oh yes. Throw the sage in the mix. What? Oh, that's just one of my labels. Yarrow. we got here we got so much stuff uh, choke cherry yeah let's throw that in there oh this is choke berry that was choke cherry and this is choke berry or no that was choke berry okay aronia okay what else what else more evening primrose. I could use these little packets of my vegetable seeds. So let's just throw that in there. Evening primrose is very, very nice. Uh, what else? Ah, nettles. Yeah. I had that growing in my garden, but Constantly cutting it back in the garden, which is fine because when we cut it back, we eat it. Just a few seeds in there. What we got here? Uh, wild rose. No, not putting wild rose. Wild rose got to be careful where I put that. There's some nice morning glory. And what's this? This is burdock. No, I don't put that just anywhere it really fills up a corner. Here is some chives. Love to have them everywhere. Pretty flowers and they're delicious. There we go. What else? More evening. What do we got here? More yarrow. Here we got some blue flag iris. Uh, that's just going to go in one spot because it needs to be in a wet spot. So I'm going to put that in my pocket. 
Good evening, Primrose. And some Calendula. Oh, that's a nice, here's an annual. But an annual that self-seeds, so the seeds should be fine. Yarrow. Okay. Lots of these old seed packets. And if any of you are interested in buying seeds from me and you're thinking, oh, you're getting rid of all your seeds, that's fine. I'll have lots, lots of seeds, lots of seeds. We haven't set up our uh, website for selling seeds yet. Anyway, too busy setting up our food forest. It's been four years, but I think we're ready to, uh, you know, the setup stage is pretty well done. You'd think, wow, four years, that's a long time. I mean, because of the diversity we wanted to set up and just so much work, all the flooding problems we we're having and other, other things, other challenges in life and stuff. But um, that was yucca, by the way, yucca. Love that. Uh, what is this? Arnica. I don't know if Arnica is native, but... I've already got a little bit of it growing in my contour, but I don't even think there's any seeds in there. Here's some more milkweed. Old, very old packet of seeds I got from the David Suzuki Foundation. So, but I had already planted them, but I just didn't plant all of them. Here's some more nanny berry. Burnham Lentigo. All right, what do we got? What else we got here? Oh, some chives. These are uh, regular chives. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Oh, and here we have some wild rye. Okay, go on. Wild rye. Most of these I also did some, you know, some fall sowing with last fall and so they're in pots and pretty soon I'm going to be taking the leaves off the top of those pots because they're going to start sprouting. These are hollyhocks which are biennials, edible flowers, delicious. I'd love to see them grow. Here is some hyssop. Some borage. Oh, yeah. Borage is great to have everywhere. Real good pollinator. So much stuff. So much. Okay, here's some dill. Here's some dill that wasn't in the kitchen. So I can use this. This is, was already stuff that I had set aside as a seed packet. Here's some salsify. Okay, that's really nice. Beautiful flower. Delicious root. Some more hollyhock. A beautiful black hollyhock or dark burgundy hollyhock. More liatris. So, uh, how are we doing here? My bowl's almost full. Well, I see that the small seeds are all going to the bottom. And the biggest ones are staying on top. So I'm going to have to really make sure I mix this up. While I'm broadcasting it, I'm making a bit of a mess here. What do we got here? Mountain ash. Yes, beautiful tree. This is a yellow wildflower that I can't remember its name, but it's native. I collected the seeds. When I collected them, I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember what, what it was. Maybe it's a sweet, sweet hawk's eye, maybe is what it's called. Here's some more sage. Yeah, what else? A lot more senna. I love that plant, senna. All right. And, uh, now, the this, this areas that I want to fill are fairly large. What is this? Oh, this is snowberry. Very pretty. Very pretty. So, got it attached to this. This is how I 
I use to dry my seeds and toilet paper. You see, and so with this variety of seeds, you know, obviously some will be eaten by the birds and maybe some of them by, this is some uh, sorrel again, some of them by the mice. Ah, New England Aster. I, didn't, I haven't found any of that yet. That's important to have in the mix. Very important, especially for the monarch butterflies. Come on, get in there. Very important for the monarch butterflies. Oh, and some columbine here. I'm going to have to, I love columbine. I'm going to have to collect some more seeds this year. Oh, some more liatris. I always, there we are. More liatris. Okay, well, you know what? This thing's getting full. Let me just make sure. Custard apple. I'm not going to put that in there because that's that's uh, that's in the family of the papaha, but that is tropical. It won't grow here. The best I can do is plant that inside. Oh, cardinal flower. Or bee balm. Some bee balm. Like I said, these are old seeds. So it's time they got planted. It's time they got to start their life cycle. Ah, blue vervain, that's nice. That's nice. I haven't seen any of that yet. Here's some more columbine. There we go. Some more hyssop in here. What else we got? What else we got? This is, what is this? This is um, blue flag iris, which uh, needs to go in a wet spot, so I'm gonna keep that. What is this? This is, oh, this is um, Nigella, I think. I think this is Nigella, so no, that's uh, black cumin. Black cumin or just regular cumin, uh, that's, uh, that needs heat, so I'm not going to put that there. Some garlic chives. Oh, I hadn't seen any of those yet. Garlic chives are great to have. More yarrow. Yarrow is great to have everywhere. It's a green mulch as well. It's good for the other plants that you've heard me say many times. Oh, yeah. Here's some more dill. Still obviously isn't uh, native, but it's just nice to have. It's so delicious. Small morning glory. Pretty annual flower. And then I'm gonna grab one of these yogurt containers. That's gonna be, this is a separate one for just a wet spot. All these can go in a wet spot, of course, but then there's some can, that can only go in a wet spot, like this, the, uh, sorry, the blue flag iris. I know, I've got some in my pocket here. Blue flag iris. I'm gonna put some asparagus as well in that wet spot. Some asparagus seeds. And I've got some woodland uh, poppy here, which that wet spot I'm talking about is also, it's partial shade with trees around it. So the woodland poppy will do well there. It's an area that uh, needs, to, needs to have roots developed. And here's some more blue flag iris. Voila. So shake that up. Now shake this up. There we go. So I'll shake it up more when I'm planting it. So this pasta jars has probably got tens of millions of seeds, if not tens of billions of seeds. Can you imagine? Some of them will grow this year, some of them will grow next year. The annuals, well, if there are annuals in here, like the marigolds, maybe they'll grow this year, and if they don't, well, they'll just decompose, and maybe the animals will eat them, or they'll just decompose and be added to the soil. And then the perennials, well, some will grow this year, and some will grow next year, some will grow the year after that, whenever they want. I really feel like waking up. 
Voila. Oh, it smells like a garden in there. There you go. Look at that. I didn't count the, the species. I don't know if any of you counted how many different species there are in here, but there, I'd say at least 20 or 30. I'll have to look at my packets later and, and count. Anyway, a nice mix of seed. Now let's just cover this up. Elastic here, oh, there it is. My little band, my little. There we go. There we go. And all set. I'm going to go do some broadcasting. Yeah, broadcasting, that's when you plant like this, and then just rake it into the soil. We'll rake the soil a bit first, broadcast, rake the soil a bit again, maybe put a little water on top if we don't have any rain or snow coming up, and we'll, we'll see what's going on. Almost forgot the Joe Pye weed. Actually, that's not for here, that's for the wet spot. Grows real well in the wet spots. So, also put some, I found some cardinal flower. That also uh, won't grow in a drier spot, only grows in the wet spots, the cardinal flower. Joe pie weed can grow in a drier spot, but it does better in a wet spot. But the cardinal flower needs to be in a wet spot. So, I, I got that cardinal flower in here with the blue flag iris, the Joe pie weed. Oh, and here's some. some black-eyed Susan I'll go in there apologize for probably the there's probably a lot of noise with the wind but uh, well you pretty well heard everything you needed to hear so here's here's my pasta bowl full of seed now I'm gonna start broadcasting it I've mixed it all up really well I'm gonna continue mixing it this is the whole area here now it's frozen, so it's I can't rake it, but I've got a little bit of a triple mix that I'll be able to sprinkle on top. That's mostly the chaff that's blown away though, it's not the seed. The seed should fall directly. This whole area, which is normally where we've been receiving our wood chips. We're not going to receive them here anymore. So uh, rather than plant grass back here, we'd like a whole bunch of native wildflowers and shrubs. So all this, there's lots of compost here because we've received, we've received a mushroom compost here as well from Highland Farms. They're a mushroom farm. 40 minutes from here. Well, look at this. This is a honey locust bean pod. Yeah, that would be nice. Have some of that grow here too. Okay, got to save some of this for elsewhere. I think I've covered the whole area. The other spot is a bit smaller. smaller area, the wet spot, kept some seed. There's probably still at least several thousand seeds in there. I kept the lion's share for this area. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna add some, some, some triple mix to this, break it. Want to add it too thickly. Just to get it on top. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna fill my I'm gonna fill a 
big watering can of water. Oh, the soil is freezing cold. It's not, it's not frozen though. I'm gonna bring, come out and water this too a little. I need to see that I didn't manage to cover with this. Oh, this is, okay, this is too cold. My hands are starting to freeze. Okay, I'll use a shovel. It's about minus, it's about minus 10 out here today. As long as it's just a nice thin layer, no more than a, a centimeter or two, no more than, let's say, half an inch. It's not even going to be that. It's probably going to be an eighth of an inch. If that. Some areas it's not going to cover at all, but that's fine. On top of the soil is fine. As soon as, uh, as, soon as it unfreezes in the next few days, I'm going to come back out and rake it. It won't have been soon enough for any of these to start sprouting. So but it'll still be safe to rake. I like I like sowing seeds like this. It's fun. And we'll see how they see how they grow. I just gotta contact chip drop and and let them know that this isn't a spot for dropping chips anymore. I've only ever gotten one delivery or two from them though. So I'm just going to come out here in a few minutes and water this. Just going to come out and give this some water. Especially in the areas I haven't covered with the, with the triple mix. So there you go. There you go, some broadcast sowing. <laughs> some broadcast sowing in this area, which is what? Well, well you can see how big it is. See how everything does. Thank mm -hmm. you.